Hello everyone, it's Jabari here. Welcome to episode 4 of Misconceptions. Among the most common misconceptions about Sub-Saharan Africa, which usually comes in the form of an insult, is in regards to the architecture, almost always pointing towards its overall lack of sophistication based on things such as building materials, its limitation to single-story buildings, or the absence of any form of urban development or planning. Well, that's cause y'all were living in cow sh huts while the white man was building stone cathedrals. <clears throat> See what I mean? So in this video, I'll go ahead and show you guys just how untrue these notions are. Let's start with the easy one. The notion that Africans never built any structures grander than one-story buildings. I honestly cannot think of any reason why this assumption even exists in the first place as there are countless examples to the contrary. Not to mention, I can't think of any good reason why two-story buildings epitomize a grand civilization in the first place. In fact, most of the world's modern-day population still live in one-story buildings, despite our ability to construct skyscrapers. So anyway, let's take a look at the Ethiopian churches of Lalibela for example. Dating back to the Zagwe dynasty in the late 12th and early 13th centuries, a collection of massive multi-story churches are located in the town of Lalibela in northern Ethiopia. However, the fact that these churches are multiple stories high is probably one of the least impressive aspects of their architecture. What makes these churches so special is the fact that they are carved out of solid rock. That's right, the windows, the doors, the stairs, and even the non-functional support beams are carved from solid stone. Well, they are churches, so they obviously learned that from the white man. Oh, really? Is that so? So, uh, could you show me some examples of two-story European churches carved from solid rock? No? Okay. Ethiopia also remained largely cut off from the European Christian world since ancient times, so much of its architectural traditions were indigenous or taken from neighboring non-Christian kingdoms to include the megalithic churches of Lalibela. More excellent examples of two-story architecture in sub-Saharan Africa can be found within the cities of the Ashanti Empire. The Ashanti produced impressive buildings that regularly reached two to three stories in height. In fact, the public buildings in the urban centers of the empire had gravity-powered toilets specifically located on second floors of these buildings that were flushed by dumping buckets of boiling water into them. Sudano-Sahelian architecture popular in places like the empires of Mali and Songhai regularly built multi-story structures. That was taught to them by the Muslims from Arabia. Oh really? Because Sudano-Sahelian architecture dates back to at least the year 40 CE, and possibly earlier. That's over 500 years before the Islamic religion was even born. So moving on to building materials. Due to Africa's sheer size, building materials vary widely from thatch and wood, mud and earth, and even stone. Yes, you heard right, stone. The material used really depended on the reliability and ease of acquisition. West Africa, for example, lacks much natural stone suitable for quarrying and building. With that being said, naturally it would be very difficult, expensive, and laborious to haul massive quantities of stone from distant lands, especially in a region that largely lacked horses. However, some parts of West Africa did have stone architecture, such as the Ghana Empire and more ancient settlements around the area of Dar Tichit, a site in Mauritania that dates back to around 2000 BCE and is composed of some 500 settlements constructed utilizing dry stone architecture. And also not surprisingly, these regions were some of the few in West Africa to have horses. However, most of West Africa did not have these luxuries. West African buildings were largely constructed of adobe, mud brick, or wattle and daub, which was a very easy and convenient material to acquire in West Africa, especially in places around the Niger River. Oh, you mean cow sh Yep, they did indeed include dung in their construction. Just like those beautiful and iconic buildings that most Europeans called home for thousands of years, and still do in some parts. That's right. They were made out of shit too. Despite the materials used, these West African buildings were often two stories high, with towers regularly exceeding three to four stories in height. 
Central African building techniques range from stone in the northern region such as the Kingdom of Kanem, or wood and bamboo in the central and southern regions such as the Kingdom of Bamum. Just as West Africans still produced impressive structures despite the use of mud, the same trend could be found in wooden architecture. Multiple story buildings were regularly constructed including beautiful and intricate architectural elements. But it was wood! They were too primitive to build in stone! Okay, well I guess that means the Chinese, the Japanese, and the Koreans are also primitive considering they had been building in predominantly wood and bamboo for thousands of years. And still actually do to this day in rural areas. So anyway, last but not least, we'll cover Southern Africa. Southern African architecture is largely overshadowed by the simple thatch and mud structures of the Zulu people, or the bush shelters constructed by the hunter-gatherer Khoi and San peoples. However, people like the Shona and Bakoni peoples have stone ruins that absolutely dominate the countryside of northern South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique. Such as the ruins of Mapungubwe, Great Zimbabwe, and the Bakoni ruins. What is most impressive about these ruins is the fact that they used no mortar in their construction whatsoever. All stones were quarried and shaped to fit snugly with one another like a piece of a puzzle, a tradition that still exists to present day by the indigenous people of the region. Despite that, only within the past few decades have Western archaeologists really given Africans credit for the creation of these structures. Before, they cling to myths and fantasies of lost white Christian civilizations or Arabic conquerors as the creators of these structures, despite the fact that this style of architecture cannot be found anywhere in Europe or Arabia. These architectural practices were found within several diverse regions all throughout the continent of Africa, in cities and towns that were just as urban as any of their Eurasian contemporaries. Thanks for watching guys, and stay tuned for the next episode. Be sure to check out the new From Nothing community website, where I'll be regularly posting all sources used for my videos. The site also includes a community forum, a Discord server with over 180 members, and soon, a highly detailed, accurate, and interactive map of pre-colonial African civilizations. This will all be free of course, so join the empire from nothing. And always remember, we don't come from nothing.